Hey guys, welcome back to another gaming challenge video. Oh Jesus Christ, man. Why is this game so goddamn fucking bright? Let me just turn the brightness all the way down. Oh, cool. That did nothing. Well, anyways, today I'm gonna see if you can beat Dead Island, the most saturated and scariest game I've ever played, with only my fists. So, to begin our terrifying journey, I wake up in a hut with a bunch of people. Dominic? Oh, no way. My name's Dominic too, bro. Consider joining the Union of Dom. I try to leave the hut, but this fucking nerd won't allow it until I get my hands on a weapon. So I grab a weapon, leave the hut, and I toss the pussy stick away so I can beat this undead meat. But before I get into the combat, let me discuss one of the most important aspects of the challenge, character selection. At first, I was going to go with Cardi B's brother Sam B, because he's a blunt weapons expert, and obviously punches to the gonads are blunt. But then I remembered all sorts of good information about Xi'an. Her medkit skills would be useful since I was going to be using a lot of medkits in this challenge. Her sneaky skill is also very handy. It says it reduces enemy awareness of you by 15%, but in all honesty, it was more like 95%. You could slap a zombie around like a bully on the playground, then as long as you took a couple steps back, they would forget about your very existence. Since I was going to be literally unarmed for this challenge, I wanted to draw the least amount of attention as possible. But on top of those two skills, Xi'an is Chinese. And why is this such an important factor? Well, Asian people are renowned for their deadly martial arts skills, so obviously since I was going to be doing hand-to-hand -hand combat, it was a no-brainer. I had to choose her. So anyways, I helped Sinemoy kill the undead, while also getting a taste of how hard the challenge would be. Your fists do some decent damage, so it's not that bad. But the thing about Dead Island is that when you level up, zombies deal more damage and get an increase in their maximum health points. Fists are the only weapon in the game that increases damage as your level increases, but the amount of damage you gain is so pitiful that it's barely noticeable. But every bit helps, I guess. The leveling up system was just another reason to avoid killing zombies as much as possible so they wouldn't become such beefy queefies. The lifeguard tells us that we need to find a better Fortnite base, and the lifeguard tower would be a damn fine choice. He also says that I should go off and get it alone since I'm immune to the virus. Bunch of cowards. I killed some walkers, said hi to Ted, but immediately left him alone because he looked pretty upset about something. Why are you looking at me like that? I grabbed the keycard, made my way to the lifeguard station, and this is where we're introduced to sprinters, aka the infected. There I was just enjoying my day on the beach, playing with beach balls and trying to make some friends, when I heard the most intense, fear-inducing scream I've ever heard in my life. Oh my god. I was thinking of turning back and telling Cinemoy that the lifeguard station had been washed away by a monsoon, and it just wasn't there anymore. But it was too late. The monsters were coming to consume me. The infected are crazy fast and extremely dangerous. On their own, they can be slightly easy to kill if you know how to time your attacks right, but in order to reach them with the inferior range of your own fists, you pretty much have to be hugging them with your labia. Right here is where I learned how dangerous the undead are in numbers. You have to manage your health, stamina, be aware of your surroundings to ensure you have room to dodge. It's a lot to think about, so I soon learned that sometimes my best defense was to simply run away. When I get into the lifeguard station, there's a big boy snacking on a little boy. These big dudes are called thugs. They're slow and hit hard, fuss rodawing you across the map. Their moves are pretty well telegraphed, so they're easy to dodge, and they throw a tantrum when you get too far from them, easily allowing you to close the gap and get in some extra hits. You can even break their arms, but this can make them more dangerous seeing that I have to get super close to touch them with my fists, so he usually gets in a chomp or two before I finish him off. They can be a challenge in certain circumstances, but overall not too difficult, especially if they fuck up and fall on the ground. At that point, you just fucking beat them until they goddamn die. I clear out the lifeguard station of undead, and then everyone moves in. The thing about Dead Island is since this is a survival zombie game, 
there's a lot of fetch quests, so I'm gonna mostly skip touching on these missions since they are, at their core, the same thing. I'll talk mainly about the most important missions from each of the four acts. Another thing worth noting is that since I'm not upgrading weapons, my only use for cash in this game is to buy medkits. Lots of medkits. Too many medkits. My next task was to bring some gas from the gas station so Mike could burn them stinky bodies. The problem with this is that I would need a car to transport the gas or else it would be a very long, dangerous and scary trip back. So I ran to the lighthouse, said sup to the survivors, talked to whoever I needed to to progress the main quests, took their ride and set off to get gas. The thing about vehicles is that they're very lethal to zombies. Even though cars felt safe and it was relatively easy to dodge walkers, it was definitely more of a challenge to dodge the infected since they sprint full speed at the vehicle you are driving with suicidal intent. So instead, I would have to do something that only men with the biggest balls would do. I certainly didn't have the biggest balls, but I didn't have a choice in the matter since I wasn't allowed to kill them with anything other than my fists. I would have to slam the brakes, exit my vehicle and beat everything to a pulp. It may look like bravery, but I was terrified the entire time I was doing it. Actually, that's the definition of bravery, doing something even though it scares you. So god damn it, I was the most badass alpha dude on the whole goddamn island. Fuck yeah. Just for the record, in the event that I did accidentally roadkill a zombie, I would load the last checkpoint until I got it perfect. It rarely happened, and the few times it did happen, it was purely the zombie's fault. Those goddamn sprinters would be so hellbent on sacrificing me to the Unga Bunga gods that they would run into the rear or sides of my vehicle, resulting in their suicides. But as long as I hit that load last checkpoint button, it was excusable. Getting the gas was simple enough. I said hello to some fellas, beat some zombies to death, turned on the power, made a barricade from crates and cars so I felt just a little more safe, filled up a gas can, watched as my barricade failed miserably, proceeded to transport the gas, and got into a fight with another car after showing off how superior my truck was. You think you're tough? You're nothing without a driver behind your wheel. No better than a puppet. So next time you think of insulting my ride, I'll crush you. Mike burns the bodies, and then I have to do another mission where I need a car to transport two boxes of juice. I don't see why I couldn't carry two at a time, even though I do it all the time when I help my parents bring groceries in the house. I could have taken the long way around and risk hitting a zombie, so instead I took the shorter way. I would have to walk and juggle juice for a couple hundred meters, but this way I wouldn't have to risk unnecessarily hitting any zombies. I deliver the juice, and now Cinemoy sends me on a suicide mission to go to the hotel to find an armored vehicle in the garage so we can eventually reinforce it to bust through the tunnel that leads to the city and find more supplies. The path to the hotel is littered with death, soiled diapers, and terror. So getting through here as quickly as possible was all I cared about, so I hauled ass. By the way, Xian must care way too much about looking hot because she chooses to wear high heels throughout the entire campaign. Through sandy beaches, slippery swimming pool areas, or even when being chased by zombies, so goddamn, she's one tough son of a bitch. The hotel door is guarded by two thugs, so I just ignored them and went straight into the hotel. The hotel is by far the most dangerous area yet. It's absolutely packed with zombies, gotcha, which kept me on constant high alert. I ran by most of the areas, especially the kitchen, because fuck that shit. Do you see how many zombies are lurking in that kitchen? Screw that shit, I'm not going in there. I also ran by the pool area, because again, fuck that shit. You know I must have been pretty scared, because up until this point, I could never break through a locked door on my first try. But when I was approaching this door, I had about 10 zombies at my back, and I wanted to get to safety ASAP. So when I grabbed that door handle, my focus reached 1 million percent, and I broke through that bitch on my first try. Getting through the hotel took only about 15 minutes. 
I found the garage and snagged the truck, but once I was outside, I had to fight off a few waves of zombies before I could safely leave. I deliver it to the liabilities at the lifeguard station, and I have a little argument with Cinemoy. I didn't want to say so, but I was afraid it might not be there. You're telling me you sent me there on a hunch? You filthy fucking piece of filth. Fuck you and all you stand for. Fuck you and your favorite color, Cinemoy. You goddamn bastard. The mission after this is unimportant, but we get introduced to suiciders here. They're super easy to deal with because all you gotta do is get close and then back away before they can explode. This is also where I discover that Fury is useless because it forces you to attack with a knife, so I didn't put any more skill points into the Fury skill tree. The last important mission on the resort is armoring up the big boy truck. The mechanics in the mechanic shop have miraculously survived the zombie invasion, but because daddy mechanic tried to be a nice guy to the zombies, he got bit, so his time on this good green earth is limited. I have to defend the workshop while they pimp my ride, but no one can defeat the dumpster dueler. I just hid inside of this dumpster, and it would act as a shield against the undead. It wasn't a perfect defense, but as long as I stood back and then moved forward to engage kill mode, they could pretty much never touch me. We agree to babysit the mechanic's daughter until she dies, and then we leave the resort and enter the city of Moresby. The missions in the city mostly consist of helping the church dwellers with errand boy tasks. Hey, we need water. Go close those fire hydrants. Oh, oh hey, we need food. Go get it for us. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, there's a bunch of zombies desecrating the graveyard. Oh, go kill them. Neg, neg, neg. I'm not your errand boy, bitch. There's three new enemy types in the city that I have to talk about. The first enemy types are the rams. These guys act as battering rams and do massive damage. They're scary as fuck, but easy to duck. Just make sure to quack and punch him in the back, because punching him in the titties does one damage per slap, but hitting him in the rear is his weak spot. Easy enough on their own, but are deadly in groups. That's pretty much true for every zombie type, so I'm gonna stop bringing that point up. After Mother Helen sends us to the pump station to find her missing comrades, we get introduced to human enemies. They all have guns, so obviously that's pretty dangerous. The best way to handle human enemies is to rush them, and by the time they have figured out what is going on, they're already dead. This is also the first major problem of the challenge. In order to get into the pump station, I need to kill the two men on the roof, and after looking around, I couldn't find any way up, so I thought I would have to pick up a gun, shoot them, and fail the challenge. After a few minutes of investigation, I realized a ladder was being sneaky and hiding just out of reach, so I climbed up, stalked my prey, and then ran up to beat them down. After I killed them both, I went into the station and killed all of the punks who were hiding inside. To my surprise, it was quite easy. The best defense is a good offense. Later on, I'm told it's safer to travel in the sewers, and the only way to reach the survivors who were hiding in Town Hall. It was definitely safer, but my fucking god, was it ever scarier. It was quite easy to sneak by or run past most of the infected. Fighting them wasn't too difficult since they didn't travel in huge packs, but down here, we're introduced to the floater. Floaters are the most foul, disgusting creatures in Benoit, and I have to touch them with my bare hands. Ooh, yucky. They spit bile, but just like the ram, you can bully them to death by punching them repeatedly in the latissimus dorsi. To wrap up Act 2, we go to the town hall, but everyone there is greedy and want to keep their supplies to themselves. You can't really blame them for it, I mean, it's the fucking apocalypse. Indiana Jones tells us about a supermarket. We go there and kill everyone inside to take the supplies for ourselves. We go back to City Hall, everyone has been converted into all-you-can-eat buffets, blah blah blah, non-important filler missions, and then it's off to the jungle. I absolutely despise the jungle. The developers went to the maximum effort to try to make me quit playing through this nightmare that I oh so willingly walked into. But damn it, I came this far. There was no turning back now. 
There's quite a bit of humans to fight in the jungle, and they're usually busy fighting the undead, so I slipped by relatively unharmed. Driving vehicles was also extremely risk-free, because there's so much road space and they're barely on the roads. The jungle is where we get introduced to the butcher. And what is a butcher you ask? Well my young Habibi, a butcher is like a zombified version of Mr. Filch from Harry Potter. Its face is nothing but a skull with a terrifying haircut. It uses nothing but its sharpened forearm bones to stab you to death like some goddamn maniac. My first encounter with a butcher was brutal. It wanted a fight, so I ran like hell, because who in their right minds would fist fight this son of a bitch? Not me, thank you very much. They run as fast as the player, so it can be pretty hard to duke them out, but the sneaky skill really helps with escaping their onslaught. I came to the jungle to find a man named Moen, so he could take us to the prison after the nerds in the lab use our blood to develop a cure for this virus, but the big cheese won't show us where he is until we do some chores for him. The missions in the jungle are the same thing as the other quests, just lots and lots of fetch quests. But we also need to kill a bad guy named Afran, who stole the good guy's boat. I take some crates of ammo and guns from Afran's soldiers while they're busy fighting zombies. I deliver them faster than Amazon's bullshit 2 day shipping, which always seems to take at least 5 days. I go to Afran's base, and I have to kill a lot of angry dudes with guns. But they're so spread out and easily snuck up on, that killing his men was such a piece of cake. The real problem was Afran himself. You can find these armored police cops that really take a lot of hits to kill because of the armor that covers their body. The thing that makes Afran so hard is that he's covered in this armor, he has an assault rifle, and a very large health pool. So killing him was the toughest thing I had to do so far in the game. Every time I reached him, I would get a couple hits in, and then he would pump my belly full of jelly. After about 30 deaths and a lot of patience, I finally beat him down. His gun had killed me more times than anything else up until this point in the game, so I left it in the water to rust for all eternity. Oh yeah, another thing I forgot to mention about the human enemies is they can teleport, so it makes it pretty hard to hit them sometimes. I find Moen, and from here he brings us to a laboratory where the majority of these missions are just doing chores to kill time while the doctor makes a vaccine. I tried dumpster dueling a butcher, but just when he was one punch away from death, he regenerated his health back to full capacity. Saitama would be disappointed. We find a tribe of the island's natives who make me go through a ceremony of worthiness and then we have to escort him to a tomb of his ancestors for plot reasons. If you couldn't already tell, the story for Dead Island is pretty uninteresting, so for that reason, I'm not going to explain why we need to go to this place and do a bunch of bullshit chores for the scientists. Defending Opie against a thug, a butcher, and a fuckton of walkers was pretty tough, but with the help of some medkits and plenty of knuckle strength, we killed all the zombies. OP reaches the tomb, and we blow his heart out for trying to disrespect women. We have to defend Moen because he's a dumbass, we return to the lab, do some more chores, prepare to leave for the prison, the lab gets overrun, we grab the vaccine, and then head for the prison. The prison missions are just as unimportant as the majority of the other missions in this game. Fetch quests and filler missions, so I'll summarize this place as well. We have to get to block C so we can find Ryder White and finally escape the island, but tight ass Titus won't show us the way there unless we run some errands for him. Can't anyone ever just make things simple for me? God damn it man. We help him out by obtaining supplies for him, like guns, ammo, food, and escorting one of his prison buddies safely to where Titus is. Eventually, the cafeteria where all the prisoners are staying gets overrun by the undead, so our remaining allies and I make our way to Ryder White. He gasses us all inside the elevator and takes the vaccine. Turns out he was a bad guy this whole time, so now we gotta fucking kill him. After running through many hallways and a ridiculous amount of undead, we get to the roof and the final fight of the game. Getting past Ryder White's soldiers was as easy as any other human enemy in the game. I kill the zombies that he sicks on me, and then a chain of awful events occur. We surround Ryder White, 
and Jin releases his infected wife who nibbles on his arm. The vaccine fucks up and turns Ryder into a Hulk zombie, and now it's time for the final boss fight. Afran was so much harder to kill than Ryder White was. Mostly because Ryder doesn't have a gun, and he gets stunned like a normal zombie does. It took me a couple tries, but eventually, like any other undead freak I've come into contact with thus far, he bit the dust. And with his death, that concludes the challenge. So was I able to beat Dead Island with only my fists? It was a terrifying experience, but hell yeah man, I did it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.